Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about the Aircry creation story. Now, before I go into summer analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue, continue to grow. Um, so the Aircry creation story, this version that I'm talking about, this version that I'm summarizing, um, is written by David Cusick. Um, there's, there's different versions um, of this creation story. Um, and some of them have, um, you know, they kind of have the same core idea going, but some of them go in different directions. Um, so today is December 25th. It's Christmas. Now, I know that most people around the world know about Jesus Christ, know about uh, the Christian view or the Christian creation story. And the, you know, there's, there, there are five major religions in the world. Um, most people, you know, at least, you know, most people know some parts of those creation stories or all of it. Um, so those are well known, but uh, the Iroquois creation story is not as well known as others. Um, and so I was like, let's talk about this version of creation. I've this, I've discussed and summarized the Christian creation story before, so now I'm going to des describe and talk about um, and summarize the Iroquois version. Uh, it, it's it's really interesting. It's it's very different uh, from the Christian creation story, um, you know, how God created the world and the universe in seven days. The Iroquois version is very different. Um, it's interesting. I mean, I was engaged the entire time I, I was reading it. Um, the descriptions are just they're they're like I mean let's just go into it let's just talk about it and you guys will judge what it is for yourselves um so pretty much what happens in this work is that um uh there pretty much was two worlds there was like an upper uh world and and like a lower world like two planes of existence one was high and one was low the lower one was just pretty much filled with a bunch of monsters. That's what we get from the story. Uh, the aircraft uh, uh, creation story just tells us there's, there's just these two worlds. Um, it doesn't really go into where these worlds came from. It just, they just were. Um, and so there are pretty much like gods or beings that exist in the upper world. Um, they have powers. They're all powerful. They're just this, this world that has a bunch of strong beings um and below them is just a bunch of massive monsters um so that right there that just got got me on the edge of my chair because i'm like wow um and so this woman is coming down the sky woman is coming down she's pregnant with two sons um, and basically from the get go, we're just told that, um, it, it's pretty, it's made simple. One of them is evil. One of them is good. This woman is coming down. The monsters are not trying to eat her for some reason. And they're actually trying to make her comfortable. Um, she, tr she first tries to get comfortable in heaven or the upper world. Um, her relatives try to make her to lay down in a bed to, to comfort her, to get her strength because she's pregnant. She's about to have these babies that are pretty much all powerful um so we're, we all just get thrown into this text into this creation story and there's a lot here um and so she's not in the upper world anymore she's coming down some versions she gets pushed off of the upper world and some versions she just she accidentally gets pushed down um this this work was was a beard scratcher because um, a lot, a lot went on. And so this woman is, is coming down. She's falling from the upper world and, uh, the animals, these monsters have a meeting. So I'm, I'm, th that got me because I'm reading a creation story and now these massive monsters that live in the lower world, they're having a conference meeting. They literally, the, I mean, the work doesn't explain it like that. Uh, the work doesn't describe it like that, but literally these monsters, these massive beings have a meeting and they're like, well, this woman is coming down. We don't, I, I mean, we've never been to the upper world. We, we've never been to this other plane of existence. None of them, none of them know like if this woman is going to be good or bad. Uh, they're just a bunch of monsters and they're like, you know, we should make her comfortable. And I'm reading this and I'm like, but but you don't know anything about this woman. There's no like prophecy that we're told. Um, we're not told like why they're welcoming her. It's just that 
they're having a meeting, um, and pretty much the monsters all together, and they're not fighting each other or killing each other or trying to eat each other. Um, they just send one of the monsters, they choose one of the monsters to go and find earth or, or dirt or, or earth. And basically, one monster is assigned to do that, and he goes into the deep, he goes into the, into the sea or into this lower world, and he goes and finds dirt and, and earth, and he's successful. And then they're like, you know what, uh, she's not going to be able to rest in, in the water, so like we should assign another monster um, to catch her and, and so that she can rest upon. And this massive turtle just assigns himself to be this woman's um, um, bed. And, and the turtle, everybody agrees, all these monsters agree. And I'm like, hmm, okay. Um, so this woman comes down. She lands on the turtle with earth on his back, uh, with dirt on his back. And this woman who is pretty much a god, the way that she's described, she's coming. It's kind of like, uh, I'm taking this from the from the Christian perspective. It's like, it's like she comes down from heaven. Uh, these monsters catch her. They treat her well. Uh, they basically build her a home. And then this turtle, this already large turtle keeps growing he keeps growing and he grows into the earth he becomes the earth basically and um now we get into pretty much the theme of good versus evil this woman lands uh the animals pretty much the monsters they all go away after that um so this woman is now comfortable on this turtle's back this living creature's back she's on earth she's on dirt um, and now we start to get a narrative, this, this theme of good versus evil of the kids in her stomach. And we're flat out told that, you know, uh, one's good, one's evil. That, that's pretty much how it goes. And the evil one in the, in his own mother's stomach says, yeah, that's, that's, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to not be born the, the normal way. Uh, I'm going to go through the side of her. Like I'm going to make a hole and be born on the side. I, I was like, okay then. Um, and so the good one is says, no, let's not try to kill her, but she dies anyway. They are born. She dies. And then good and evil are, are on this turtle's back, which now is a, a massive island and it keeps growing. And basically the good and evil sons become gods. Hmm. And, and so the story continues and the good one makes the stars and he becomes the creator of the universe. He, he makes the stars. He actually takes his mother's head and um, turns it into the sun. He turns his mother's head into the sun. Um, he uses the other parts of her body to make the moon and... The, I mean, there is something for recycling, I guess. Um, he doesn't waste anything. The good son recycles his own mother. And so that happens, and the evil one is like, you know, we should keep everything dark and, and to just keep the universe how it is, keep everything dark and, and, and scary. And the good one's like, no, I'm going to create human beings. And so we get this back and forth between brothers and... The good one creates humans and, and, and food and trees and mountains and all the beautiful things in the world and the sun and the moon and all this and that. And the evil one is, creates apes because he was trying to co copy his brother, but it doesn't work. He creates apes. He creates horrible monsters and, and, and creatures that are bad for humans. And it just it's just like two people trying to work on a project and it's just not working and uh basically they're like you know we got to kill each other we we got to we got to kill each other and um uh yeah they have a competition and i don't know why but for some reason they tell each other their weaknesses the evil one says you can kill me with deer antlers and the good one says okay and and the good one says what you can kill him with but he it, it's kind of a trick i mean there are different um Iroquois creation stories, some of them say that the good one did say uh, what could kill him, and some say it was a deception. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. I mean, there's different accounts. Uh, what basically happens in, in the David Cusick version is that 
the good one kills the evil one with the deer antlers, and um, he goes down to hell or to the under underworld, and uh, he says he's gonna lord over everyone who dies, and the good one can't do anything about it because he just killed his brother, and he goes on creating wonderful things on earth. While when you die, you go down to the evil brother, and I guess he'll be the god that um, decides what happens to you. Yeah. And that's pretty much the Ikra creation story. I mean, it's a much simpler, simpler version. Um, there are more complex versions. Uh, but this was very fascinating. Um, this good versus evil theme. Uh, the good brother really doing some, some messed up things. Uh, using your mother as recycling. That That is something. Uh, that uh, I've never read that before. Um, they fight. They, they don't get along. Good versus evil. Uh, the monsters just disappear after that. I, the, pretty much they go to the deepest section of the ocean. So the, technically speaking, according to the Earthcry version of the creation of the world, mon those monsters still exist. They, we just, they don't want us to see them. They, don't, they just don't want to be a part of um, the surface activities. And, um, and yeah... Yeah, I mean, I don't like in terms of analysis, in terms of deeper meaning here, guys. It's it's um, this is um, th this is something you know. Um, creation stories are supposed to kind of like make you wonder and make you think. I'm kind of just terrified after this because now. Technically, the sun is is a dead woman's head. Uh, the, the torso, the dead woman's torso, is the moon, and there is a dark god waiting to kill you or to torture you when you die. And um, there are some deep creatures in in the bottom of the sea that that are not that that are deep and 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 large, scary creatures. Um, but very f fascinating story, though. Very fascinating creation story. Uh, it kind of makes you think about where the world comes from. And that, um, hey, gods don't, um, gods are not always um, the most pleasant things to think or read or, or to talk about. But that's just my perspective on this work. There's always more to the story. Uh, that is just David Cusick's version and... That's pretty much my summary and, and what I thought about it. Um, so, yeah. Um, I hope you don't have an evil brother. And um, Merry Christmas. Hope this creation story um, fits right next to the fireplace and, and really warms your heart for today. Um, that's all I have to say. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.